Welcome to the introductory programming course on NPTEL MOOCs. Uh, the goal of this is to um, learn how to code basic programs in the C programming language. Um, basically the aim of this course is to teach you how to solve problems using a computer and by the end of this course we will hope that you can write medium sized programs maybe running to a couple of hundred lines of code comfortably in the C programming language. Okay. Programming nowadays is considered a basic skill um, similar to mathematics um, that is needed across all disciplines like uh, engineering in the sciences and nowadays even in the arts. So a little bit of programming skill um, is an enhancement to any other skill set that you might already have. This course uh, we will start from the ground up. Uh, we do not assume any prior experience in programming uh, whether in C or in any other language. So the focus will be to start from the basics and to use C as a program medium of programming. Okay. A couple of words about uh, the process of programming. Um, it involves two basic steps. One is to define the problem. Often you get real world problems which are not um, precise enough to write a program for. So the first step would be to define and model the problem. And this is a very important step in uh, large scale software development. However, um, we will not focus on this as part of this course. Um, during this course you will not write a large software system like the Indian Railways Reservation System. Um, those are extremely complex problems involving multiple programmers. In this course we will assume that the problem is well defined and already provided to you. So they will be precise and they will be fairly short and simple. So this is the first step of programming which is definition of the problem which you can assume will be given. Okay. Now comes the second step which is to obtain a logical solution to your problem. Um, and what do we mean by a logical solution? A logical solution is a finite sequence of steps. Uh, do this first, do this next. If a certain condition is true, do this, otherwise do something else. Okay. This is uh, called an algorithm. Uh, so an algorithm is basically a finite step by step procedure to solve a problem. Uh, one way to visualize an algorithm uh, is using a flow chart. Uh, if you are new to programming, it is recommended that uh, you draw flow charts to define the solution to your problem. Um, experienced programmers very rarely draw flow charts, but that is not a reason for beginning programmers to avoid flow charts. So defining a problem is there then the process of coming up with an algorithm. This is a very important step in the programming process. And followed by this uh, there is a third step which is to implement the algorithm in a usual programming language. Okay. So is the concept of an algorithm a new concept? I would claim that it is not. Uh, a claim, uh, an algorithm is a very familiar concept. Uh, the most important example that you can think of are cooking recipes. Now cooking recipes are written in a way that they are almost algorithms. They are not quite precise enough for a computer, but they come quite close. Okay. For example, let us take an unnamed dish, uh, uh, a dessert and uh, let us look at uh, how things are specified in a recipe and we will see that this analogy is quite deep. Uh, there is a very strong similarity in the way that a recipe is written and a program is written. So usually th uh, they will have a list of ingredients up front. Uh, for example, you have ice cream, crushed cereal and so on. Uh, and then once you have all the ingredients in place, uh, then you have instructions to say, okay, how do you start and how do you end up with the dish. Now those instructions will be fairly precise. Of course you assume that the person preparing the uh, dish is a fairly 
experienced cook so that certain instructions need not be given in very precise detail okay for for example you can say uh, do this heat oil and so on and it is assumed that a person knows how to heat oil okay even so you will see that certain recipes are fairly vague and other recipes are fairly detailed and in a, any recipe you can see certain things which are vague uh, and will cause confusion to most people for example uh, here is a term uh, which says try to make uh, each scoop about as large as your fist okay now that of course is a vague term because uh, my fist could be a different size than yours and uh, uh, then you see that uh, in a formation that makes it easy to dip in order so this is fairly vague and it's not very helpful to um, a program uh, uh, a cook who is making this for the first time okay. so think of algorithms as similar to recipes but mentioned in a more precise manner okay another way uh, you can be uh, familiar with algorithms is when you have uh, the when you buy a make it yourself kit for a furniture or something like that and uh, you will be provided with a step by step instructions on how to assemble the kit okay often when you buy a disassembled table or something like that it will come with a sheet telling you how to start with the uh, components and build a table right those are also familiar, uh, similar to an algorithm okay so let us look at uh, uh, a flow chart to depict a mathematical algorithm and uh, we will uh, use this flow chart to explain certain conventions about how algorithms ca uh, can be described okay so every flow chart will have uh, a start and an end okay and it will have a finite number of boxes so this is the finite number of instructions that i was talking about there are certain conventions in drawing flow charts the start and the end are often described in circles um, then uh, there are ordinary boxes and then there are diamonds okay. we will shortly describe what they mean okay. so um, suppose you want to write an algorithm for adding the first n numbers all of you know how to do it the point is how do you describe this step by step to somebody who doesn't know it already so first you have to take uh, what is the upper limit n and then uh, you have to sum them up so one way to sum them up is start with an initial sum of 0 and then add numbers one by one uh, so increment uh, a counter from 1 all the way up to n okay. so you start with i equal to 1 and then add the ith number to the sum and then increment i if i is already n then you are done if i is not n then you go back and uh, do the sum all over again okay until you hit an i when you reach i equal to n you come out of the uh, program print the sum and end the program okay so this is a very simple flow chart so initially uh, if n is less than 1 you have nothing to do if n is greater than 1 you start a counter from i equal to 1 to n and add the numbers one by one until you hit the nth number if you wanted to compute uh, a slightly different problem which is let's say the factorial of n which is just the product of the first n numbers the flow chart will look fairly similar the only difference is that uh, instead of adding numbers you will multiply them okay so this flow chart is similar to the previous flow chart you will first input an n and then uh, increment n until you hit uh, n equal to uh, m if so you will finally print the print the factorial otherwise you go back to the loop okay so here are the no, uh, conventions used uh, the start symbol is often depicted as a circle or an oval uh, the n input symbol and the output um, symbol are often represented as parallelograms and the normal operation boxes are 
represented as rectangles and the test box to see whether you have hit a limit to test some condition in general they are represented as diamonds.